Hello and welcome aboard class 66 number 566 for a driver's eye view cab ride. Our journey today starts at Haywards Heath on the Brighton Main Line, our train having come from the aggregates plant on the nearby Ardingly branch. Our journey takes us across the Ouse Valley Viaduct and through the busy stations at Freebridges and Gatwick Airport. Our train follows the Red Hill lines via its namesake to Purley and on to East Croydon. The train itself continues to Acton Lane reception in North West London, with that section of the journey being covered in part 2 of this video. The service we are taking today is 6 Mike 60, the 0955 Haywards Heath to Acton Lane reception. Filmed on the 27th of August 2022 in near perfect weather conditions. A huge thank you to Loco66 for allowing me to use this excellent footage. Today is formed of empty hopper wagons, having been unloaded at the aggregates plants on the Ardingly branch. The branch is directly ahead of us at this point, meaning that trains heading back towards London are required to perform a run round move at Haywards Heath. here at Copyhold Junction allows passenger trains to pass. Three routes are available from Tango 336 signal directly ahead of us. The main aspect with no junction indicator would take us onto the aforementioned freight only Ardenly branch. Position 1 gives access onto the down main in the up direction and position 2 the up main in the up direction.
Yarding Lie branch runs parallel to us on the far right hand side. The branch was first opened in 1883 to provide a link between the Brighton Main Line and the London, Brighton and South Coast Railway's Lewis to East Grinstead Line, part of which now forms the Bluebell Railway. Closed to passengers in 1963, the majority of the branch was lifted, with only a short section remaining for freight operations. All is not lost for this branch, however. In 1997, the Bluebell Railway acquired the trackbed from the aggregates terminal to its own station at Horsted Keynes, giving hope that passenger trains may once again run on this line. pass over the Grade 2 listed Ooze Valley Viaduct. Designed by John Erpef Rastrick, the viaduct is made up of 37 semicircular arches and sits at a maximum height of 96 feet. The 1,480 foot structure was awarded Grade 2 listing in 1983. Located 33 miles and 64 chains from London, Balcombe Station was opened in its current location in 1848. Despite being managed by Southern, the majority of services calling here are actually Thameslink trains. The 1,131-yard Balkan Tunnel is another example of work by engineer John Erpef Rastrick. Water ingress into this tunnel has always been and remains a problem. It's not uncommon for large icicles to form on the roof of the tunnel from the ingress of water during cold spells.
Position 1 route indicator on Tango 294 indicates that the route has been set across Balkham Tunnel Junction onto the upslope. Balkham Tunnel Junction marks the end of the emergency bi-directional signalling on the Brighton Main Line. To our left, and soon to our right, we see the Free Bridges Depot, the southern home to the Thameslink Class 700s.
If illuminated, the position 4 route indicator on Tango 284 would take us onto the upfast. The subsidiary signal is provided for permissive working at Freebridges Station. Lines from Horsham and the Arran Valley join us here at Free Bridges. The large building to our right is the Free Bridges Area Signalling Centre, housing the signallers responsible for our safe passage today. Out of sight to the left is the new Free Bridges Rail Operations Centre. six foot to our right we can see Tango 1182 Romeo shunt signal. This signal is a bit of an oddity as it is unlit and will only show a proceed aspect when Tango 1182 shunt signal is in the off position. The signal is provided to aid visibility to drivers setting back into Crawley New Yard Aggregates Terminal. Tango 266 signal indicates to our driver that our train is to remain on the upslow as we approach Tinsley Green Junction and Gatwick Airport. If illuminated, the junction indicator would route us onto the up platform loop.
Tinsley Green Junction allows for trains to cross from the up fast to the up slow. Any service booked to call at Salford's or Ellswood must cross to the slow lines at or before this point. Tango 260 signal gives indication of our platform at Gatwick Airport. The main aspect indicates we are bound for platform 2. Position 1 and position 4 route indicators offer us routes into platform 1 and platform 3. A potential distraction for drivers at this point is low flying aircraft landing at Gatwick. The railway line has trip wires surrounding it. Should one of these wires be broken by a low flying aircraft, signals in the area would be automatically reverted to danger and the traction current switched off. Class 165 to our right has just terminated here at Gatwick Airport, having worked a service over the North Downs from Reading. Things are looking up with a green signal. Staying on the up slow, Tango 252's position 4 route indicator would allow us to cross to the fast lines, a move that was common when Gatwick Express services from Victoria terminated here. Hawley is the only station between Gatwick and Purley to have platforms on all four lines.
Although the speed limit on this section of line is currently 90 miles per hour, our Class 6 train is limited to a maximum of just 60 miles per hour. Being empty, obtaining maximum speed isn't too taxing on our 3000 horsepower locomotive. Salford Station was built in 1915 to serve the workers at the Monotype Corporation's factory. Services were not advertised and was sparse to meet the needs of the workers. Trains started to call at the station regularly in 1932. Heading back to Reading, the same Class 165 we passed at Gatwick Airport. As we approach Ellswood, Tango 216 signals position for route indicator would give us access to the down platform in the up direction. Position 5 would route us onto the up fast and the red hill avoiding lines. We've got a main aspect only, meaning we're staying on the up slow. Our old friend, the class 165 to our right, needs to cross from the fast to the slow lines in order to access Red Hill Station. In a rare turn of events, the signaller has seen fit to allow our train to carry on ahead of it. To our right, the fast lines become the quarry lines and head off, avoiding the intermediate stations at Redhill, Merstham and Causton South. The quarry lines will rejoin us again at Stoats Nest Junction. The theatre box on Tango 496 signal is used to give platform indication to drivers of trains stopping at Redhill. Three platforms are available to up trains numbered 0, 1 and 2, although platform 1 is only available for trains that are terminating at Red Hill. The lines from Tunbridge and Edenbridge join to our right. To our left we can see the lines from Rygate, Guildford and Reading. The aforementioned Gatwick to Reading services, our friendly class 165, is required to change ends here at Red Hill.
Platform Zero, with its long approach road to our left, is used regularly to run round locomotives that are heading to or from Tunbridge West Yard, avoiding the need for lengthy journeys via Popart's Junction in London. We pass over the M25. The quarry lines are just out of sight to our right hand side. One mile and 71 yards, Merston Tunnel takes us under the North Downs.
Star Lane or Skew Lane Bridge, depending on who you speak to, is where the quarry lines pass overhead. Opening in 1889, Coulson South is the first station on our route today to be within the London travel card zones.
position 1 route indicator on Tango 184 would route us across Stokes Ness Junction and onto the upfast via a 70 mph crossover. Stokes Nest allows crossover from the fast to the slow as well as vice versa. The line to our extreme left is the Tattenham Corner branch. Freedom Station on the Tattenham Corner Branch can be seen just off to our left. We pass over top of the Tattenham Corner branch. The branch line itself will join us at the next station, Purley. six platforms, Purley is one of the larger stations on the route. The platforms off to our right serve the aforementioned Tattenham Corner Branch as well as trains to and from Caterham. Behind the station to our right you can see the Purley Aggregates Plant, also served by rail. The position 1 route indicator on Tango 170 signal would route us onto the up fast, our train is remaining on the up slow.
pass through Pearly Oaks. Although there are platforms on all four lines here, only the platforms on the slow lines are in use. The fence between the fast and the slow lines has gates which can be opened in an emergency. signal steps up to green. The position 4 route indicator provides access onto the slow reversible line here at South Croydon. to our right join us from East Grinstead, Uckfield and Oxted. is provided on approach to Tango 134 due to poor visibility of the signal owing to the bridge being in the way. Not a rare sight on the Brighton mainline, but not an everyday occurrence. A southeastern class 375 passes us. 
Due to engineering works or disruption, southeastern trains sometimes divert via Redhill and East Croydon, picking up their normal path at London Bridge and on to Charing Cross or Cannon Street. I say not an everyday occurrence, there is in fact a daily route refreshing train that runs this route, but not as a revenue earning service. Tango 126, with its various route indicators, gives us access to four of the six platforms here at East Croydon. We are just approaching East Croydon Station and the end of this video. Hopefully you'll join me for part two, where we see our train travel from East Croydon, through Selhurst, up to Clapham Junction and along the West London lines to Acton Lane reception. If you have enjoyed this video, please do hit that like button and consider subscribing to Dadrail. Why not check out some of my other cab ride videos, including Seaford to Brighton and Acton Yard to Purley via Herne Hill. Once again, thank you for watching, hope to see you in another video or live stream very soon.